Over the past 10 years, firefighting research has focused primarily on the residential fire ground, taking a look at both ventilation and suppression. The goal of this study is how do we coordinate those actions? <laughs> Currently, we're just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, partnering with the Cobb County Fire Department, taking a look at what coordinated fire attack means in multifamily dwellings. Cobb County is a Metro Atlanta agency that uh, we service about 800,000 citizens, and uh, we're a 29 station, all career departments. Uh, we have five battalions and uh, about 700 uh, firefighters. The structures here are real structures. About 90 days ago is when people got moved out of here. And then UL has come in and, and put in the actual furniture to make them as real as possible. Multifamily dwellings provide a unique set of exposure challenges when under fire conditions. As a fire begins to grow and develop within a single apartment, both heat and fire gases can be spread throughout the building via common void spaces and pipe chases. These garden apartments incorporate an enclosed center stairwell, which can allow smoke and fire to travel upwards in the egress path and possibly trap occupants above. Additionally, fires in lower level apartments have the potential to extend on the exterior of the building via windows or balcony openings to either occupied apartments above or a common attic space going from one side of the building to the other. These typically have a lot higher life safety density, so you're putting a lot more people in a much smaller footprint, so you have significantly greater uh, exposures both of property and lives in these. So the work that you see happening here really takes an army to put uh, forward to, to accomplish. And you have very dedicated staff, uh, people, scientists, engineers, and workers who just want to know basic answers to questions. We in the fire service want to use that information and the application to help save lives and property. So uh, these tests are super important because they actually put the laboratory test into real life context. So as researchers and engineers, uh, our work is governed by physics, and that physics doesn't care for in the field or in the laboratory. But the field presents some unique challenges, such as building construction, uh, restrictions in access, weather, and it's important for us to come out to the field to test the same things we've learned in the laboratory so that we can really tie this back to the street and tie this to the fire service. Thanks to the assistance of DHS, FEMA, and UL, we've been able to take the laboratory to the street. Uh, we've brought our trailer and all our instrumentation out to the field, and that allows us to have a mobile data station. Uh, from there, we run all the cables out to each one of the apartments. That includes temperature measurements in each apartment and each room within that apartment, as well as pressure, velocity, and gas concentration. We want to ensure that the tactics that we're utilizing and how we're utilizing them is having the greatest benefit on the victims and their survivability. So the things that we do, while they may look like they're being a benefit to the immediate area that we're attacking or operating in, it may have uh, negative effects in other areas of the structure. So this is our fan on prior to them getting into the apartment. The crew's going to make entry, they're going to open the door to the apartment, there's going to be no delay. They've got a smooth bore nozzle ready, they're going to start flowing, they're going to do O pattern. In order to examine how coordinated fire ground actions affect not only the fire department, but common areas in the building, other apartments within the building, and other buildings that may be attached to the structure, some of the scenarios that were examined included a bedroom fire in a single apartment, with no fire showing on fire department arrival, an apartment with multiple rooms involved and fire showing from the sliding door in the living room. A terrace level apartment fire with fire and smoke extension to the common stairwell. And a terrace level apartment fire with exterior fire spread across multiple balconies. A primary concern in multifamily dwellings is keeping the common stairway between the apartments clear of smoke and fire. To examine this, we looked at several different tactics, including controlling the access door to the fire apartment, positive pressure ventilation, both during and after fire control, and hydraulic ventilation post knockdown. This research would not be possible without the support of a fire department sending resources, personnel, and equipment uh, to allow the safe 
conduction of these experiments. Fortunately, I have a command staff and a fire chief that's very supportive of the mission the ULFSRI is doing. So they dedicated an engine crew and a ladder truck every day to the assignment. Um, and then today, with the fires even being bigger at the end, we now have four engines, a ladder truck, a heavy rescue, and then 10 extra off-duty personnel that our, you know, our department is supporting being here today. Through the county, they were awesome to let us, all four of us stay the whole time and keep that constant variable the same of the same four guys are on fire attack every time. I was extremely surprised by how big of an operation this was. The, the experiments have been much bigger and more uh, in depth and detailed and, and more realistic, honestly. Um, it hasn't been a staged fire. It was, we're gonna light the fire off in the bedroom and let it keep going. And they've let the fires get significantly bigger than we anticipated. I can't imagine anyone arguing the fact, well, this is still a controlled environment. Yes, it's a controlled environment for UL's information gathering, but as far as being on the fire attack crew, I can't imagine a more realistic approach to what we're doing here. At first, I wondered how accurate you could take measurements in the real world outside of a lab. There's a lot of unknowns. We have rain and humidity in Georgia. And then with our built environment, the structure itself, lens for a heavy fire load. By seeing all the instrumentation and how consistent UL's kept things throughout the course of the two weeks has been pretty amazing. Our next step once we're done with all our experiments is to get the data and analyze it. Then we come up with uh, the tactical consideration. The American Fire Service is diverse in how we respond to incidents. The goal with the information I feel is for those agencies to take it back and internalize it and figure out what works for them.